Have you ever wondered why good police officers don't stand up and speak out against tyrannical police chiefs and elected officials? It's because when an officer speaks out, he gets fired. This is exactly what happened to Officer Enrique Ortega of the Whitehall Division of Police. He chose to stand up and speak out, and now this police officer, with over 20 years of experience, this husband and father of four, is now unemployed. This man, who has honorably served his community for over 20 years, is now struggling to feed his family because the Whitehall Chief of Police, Mike Crispin, puts his personal feelings above the needs of his employees and Ohio labor law. Whitehall Police Chief Mike Crispin is a coward who leads his organization by fear. Officer Ortega was fired to send a message to the other officers of the department. If you speak out or seek help from the union, your career is over. This all began in the spring of 2024 when Officer Ortega, serving as the department's FOP union grievance rep, administered a morale survey. Before we get too far, it's important to understand the role of an FOP grievance rep. The officers of the Whitehall Division of Police are members of a labor union, the Fraternal Order of Police, or FOP. When the officers have an issue at work that they don't believe can be resolved in-house, they will often contact a union rep who will file a grievance and help negotiate with city leaders and the police administration to resolve the problem. This is how the FOP has worked for over a hundred years. Getting back to this specific case, the officers with the Whitehall Division of Police went to Officer Ortega with a problem. The morale of the department was extremely low. This was made clear by the fact that a department with 37 sworn officers, lost 14 of them to early retirement and transfers in recent years. That means over one-third of the department left early. This would be a red flag to any reasonable person in a leadership position. With this information in mind, Officer Ortega administered a survey to quantify the state of morale, working conditions, and mental health on the department. The results of the survey were staggering. Almost 75% of the officers stated they feel overwhelmed at work. About 80% of the officers stated they feel anxious at work. Once again, 80% of the officers stated they feel depressed at work, but not at home. About 90% of the officers stated they feel angry at work. Roughly 90% of the officers stated morale is below average to horrible on the Whitehall Division of Police. A majority of the officers stated they do not wish to stay in Whitehall until retirement. Among the reasons the officers gave for feeling this way were toxic leadership, unfair internal affairs investigations, inconsistent discipline and punishment systems, constantly changing officers' schedules without fair notice, and a ticket and arrest quota that is being used for promotions and job assignments. On May 16th, armed with this information, Officer Ortega and local FOP board member Steve Mason presented the results of the survey to Whitehall Mayor Michael T. Bevins. On May 28th, the mayor asked for a copy of the presentation. Then... Conspicuously, on May 30th, Officer Ortega was relieved of duty and stripped of his badge and gun. Whitehall Chief of Police Mike Crispin justified his actions by stating that Officer Ortega was threatening to cause problems for the department if his demands were not met. He's complaining about Officer Ortega threatening to file legal actions against the city to improve working conditions for its police officers. This is Officer Ortega's responsibility as a union rep, and the chief knows this is union business. This is proven by the chief's own recorded conversation with one of his lieutenants on June the 3rd. Um, do you think he's, do you, did you think that he was in a position that he could cause things harm here? Or? I think that's true. Uh, I think he could. Um, I think that, you know, what 
not necessarily causing harm, but disrupting operations as far as just filing a grievance on every little thing, which, of course, we're allowed to do, but it's more, you know, traditionally we try to work together if we can to come up with solutions. Um, and additionally, he has the, as the grievance rep for patrol and the contract negotiator for the patrol, he has the ear of patrol. Have you ever had any interactions with um, the union yourself as the union chair that, that where they would even permit that? Not explicitly, but it's been basically understood that my position as a union rep means that I will frequently find myself in uh, at odds with management. My goal is not necessarily to come to terms. It's, you know, in some cases to whatever it takes to win. From that day forward, Chief Lord Farquad began scheming for a way to get rid of Officer Ortega. He and his minions began sifting through hours upon hours of Officer Ortega's body-worn camera footage, looking for a reason to justify terminating him. The evidence they found is laughable, but that did not stop them. Chief Michael Crispin Farquaad found three clips taken completely out of context, totaling 21 seconds to justify the firing of Officer Ortega saying he made multiple inappropriate comments on body camera that discredit the department. <sighs> I forgot how much it sucks having to wear this uniform. <sighs> Looking forward to retiring every day. Yeah, you've been, what, 25 years? I'm going to go right. pretend to do some work this afternoon. I'm pretend. Done. I'm done for the day. <laughs> In the interest of true transparency, I have the full clips with context, and I would like to share them with you now. The first clip was recorded on May 23, 2024, where you'll hear Officer Ortega complaining about how uncomfortable his uniform is. During the clip, Officer Ortega mentions that he's been off work for more than a week and is complaining that the body armor and gun belt are causing him pain. This is a very common complaint made by anyone who has ever worked the street. <sighs> I forgot how much it sucks having to wear this uniform. My body's like, nope, it's been three, almost three weeks without it. The next clip shows Officer Ortega tell a man that he's looking forward to retirement. As an officer with 23 years on the street, he should be looking forward to his retirement. I try to help out on life's things. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, you been, by the way. Hey, man. Looking forward I'll to retiring every day. Yeah, you've been, what, 25 years? Uh, 16 here in Whitehall, and 23 I was total. He was so not was driving. Back, oh, no, I way up north, no, nowhere else. Back, the right third here. clip shows Officer Ortega joking with a citizen about pretending to look busy. This was after a lengthy conversation with the citizen about tree trimming expenses. Or almost 40000 That is ridiculous. A year. But he said, you know, that's part of doing business. So he's got a lot of properties and a lot of cash. So I don't know. I just, you know, I got better use for money than just yeah. give it away. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Um, All right, sir. Well, I'm going to go right. pretend to do some work this afternoon. I'm pretend. Done. I'm done for the day. <laughs> All right. Have a better day. There is also a fourth clip that is supposed to be evidence of Officer Ortega being a racist. In this clip, he stops a black man for driving 65 and a 35. He writes the man a ticket for driving 55 and a 35, then asks for consent to search the man's vehicle. This conversation lasts about a minute and 40 seconds. Several times during the conversation, you'll hear Officer Ortega tell the man, I'm asking for your consent. You can say no. I want you to understand you have the right to make this decision. According to Chief Crispin, this conversation was racial profiling. Do you have any weapons on you, bud? No weapons. I'm going to ask you to just keep your hands out your pocket. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in that car you need to know about, man? No, sir. No weed? No, sir. No I don't drink. smoke. I don't drink. What's with all the air fresheners hanging on the turn signal then, man? So I always have air fresheners. I, I get that, but that's like a dozen plus. Man. It's like almost two dozen. She actually man. gets on me for that. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't smoke. I don't drink. So there's none in the car? None in the car. Do you mind if I take a look? Yeah. 
Yes, I can take a look, or yes, you might. I mean, there's nothing in the car. I mean, I would want to talk to my mother about that, okay. uh, but there's nothing in the car. Listen, you have the right to say no, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm just asking you. Yes, I mean, can I talk to my mother about it? Dad's car, right? You're the one driving it. You're in yeah. charge of it. You're responsible for everything yeah. that's in it, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's how this works. Yes, sir. So you can tell me no. I mean, it's not going to change anything. Uh -huh. All right. I mean, I, I, would, I, I, I want mean, I want you to understand that you have the right to make this decision. Yes, sir. Because you are in control of this car. Yes, sir. You're the one responsible yes, for sir. everybody and everything inside of it while exactly. you're driving. Exactly. Right. So if you say no, that's fine. Uh -huh. That's not going to change anything on my end. Uh -huh. I'm simply asking if you mind. I mean, I would like to talk to at least my mother about it. How old are you good? I'm 22. 22? Yes, sir. Okay. So that's one of the joys of being an adult, right? You get to make these decisions now. Yeah. Okay. You can say no. It's, it's going to be fine. It's cool. Yeah, but I would, like I said, I still want to talk to my mother about it. Okay. She's on the phone right now, so okay. I would want to talk to her about it, and then we can go from there. But okay. like I said, I have nothing. I have nothing to hide. Okay. I work at Apple. I work for Apple. I'm a music producer. I literally about to leave to go to New York, to Sony. All right. I have nothing to hide. Okay. Have no warrants. Don't smoke. Don't drink. I just left the gym. <laughs> all right. Nothing at all. All right. Well, listen. I tell you what. We'll go ahead and just finish this up, okay? I'm going to change this because on this citation I put um, no. You didn't show me right then, but I can go. I'll fix it real quick. It's not a big deal on my end, right? To, to yes, you did show proof of insurance, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, set aside you for 60 some plus mile an hour, right? Which in the state of Ohio would be considered a reckless operation when you're 21 plus over the speed limit. Okay. I started you for 55. Okay. Okay. That means you do not have to appear in court if you don't want to. According to a July 8th press release, Officer Ortega was fired for patterns of unsafe acts with the use of weapons, unprofessional interactions with the public, and a substantiated complaint involving racial profiling. The case of unsafe acts with weapons was a case where he attempted to use a taser on a fleeing suspect who was riding a bicycle. He was complimented for doing a great job, but reminded to be careful using the taser on someone who might receive a secondary injury, i.e. falling off a bicycle. At the end of the day, it's clear that Officer Ortega was fired because the Whitehall Chief of Police, Mike Crispin's feelings were hurt when Officer Ortega pointed out the fact that the officers of his department do not like him. Chief Mike Crispin is the type of corrupt, tyrannical leader who will lie about his employees and mischaracterize their actions rather than accept criticism and acknowledge the fact that he is actually the problem. Officer Ortega needs to be commended for his efforts to protect the officers of the Whitehall Division of Police and for his courage to stand up to the cowards who abuse their power and authority. Chief Mike Crispin, has shown that he lacks the emotional fortitude or the integrity required to be the chief of police.